I'm just putting some finishing touches to a page of sketches which I produced after my walk up to Godsbridge a few weeks ago. And it was while I was up there, I realized that I'd actually filmed this walk, a circular walk, from Bowes Village to Godsbridge and back again, a couple of years ago. So what I've done, I've come back, edited the film together, and that's the film that you're about to see. This walk is based around the village of Bowes, which is just off the A66 Trans Pennine route and five miles southwest of Barnard Castle. There is ample parking in the village centre. The route begins by heading south through the cut, and just before the bridge will turn right along the River Greeter, past Swinham, Lady Myers, East Melwaters, and up to God's Bridge. From there, we head northeast onto Bowes Moor, up to West Stony Keld, and then we pick up the road which will take us back into the village of Bowes. There's normally plenty of room to park in the free car park which is adjacent to the village hall. This is the cut, a narrow lane that takes us down towards the River Greeter. As you round the corner you'll come to the bridge, but don't cross the bridge. We'll continue right through the woodland, keeping the River Greeter on our left. Continue through the woods, over a stile, across a field, and then you'll come to this, Mill Force, on the River Greeter. We'll make our way up onto the path, which actually was part of the old mill race. And down to our left, you'll get an overview of the falls. If you look hard enough, further along you'll find even this old sluice gate which was part of the water race for the mill. Back on the path, carry on until you see Carter's Pool, this flat area of river down on your left. Pass through this gate and then head right diagonally across the field. Where you'll come to another stile, which you'll cross, and it's got a good signpost for the Penelm Way. We're now on part of the Penelm Way loop that passes round by Bowes. And we head left along the lane following the sign for the River Greeter a third of a mile. Once you get past this farm, you're out onto the open pasture land of the Greeter Valley. On your right you may see this spring which is surrounded by a small stone wall, topped with a large coping stone with a half moon cut in it. I have heard that this was actually put here by the Romans, but I'm not sure about that, but it certainly is a little bit different. Next you'll see this small weir over the river, and we'll take the footbridge to get to the other side. It's a lovely spot here, very calm and quiet. A good place for a coffee, and even a bit of sketching. There's a good track that goes past two or three farms here, and it's lovely walking, very flat. By now, the greeter is away to our right. Pass by this farmhouse, and at the gate, turn immediately left. You can hardly go wrong, because you can see there's good signposts.
across the field and you'll come to Cadwell Bridge, which we cross. And immediately after the bridge you'll see this information board from East Melwaters Farm. And it shows all the different footpaths you can take around the farm area. We're going to take the purple one which goes alongside Slater and Beck before getting up to the farmhouse and following along the river greeter to God's Bridge. The river alongside us now is Slater and Beck which has wound its way down off the moor. Just after these small waterfalls, take the path that goes up to the right and through the gates towards East Melwaters Farm. Go through the gate and then you're on to the lane that leads back towards the A66. We go down that lane and before the bridge, through another gate into the field on the left. We're now back on the banks of the River Greeter and it's just a case of following this good footpath all the way to God's Bridge. The River Greeter here is a little bit unusual because as you walk along the path you'll see that the water actually flows out from under the river bank and further on the riverbed is dry. That's because of the geology and the limestone and water only flows through here after really heavy rain or floods. And now we're approaching God's Bridge. With an old lime kiln on the left, we'll then go through the gate and we're onto the limestone pavement that is God's Bridge. God's Bridge is the furthest point away from Bowes on this walk, and it makes an ideal spot for a coffee and something to eat. I'm pretty sure that many people who do the Penang Way walk across here without even realising what it is. It's a remarkable natural limestone feature. Once we've had a good look at God's Bridge, we'll take this track up towards the bungalow and that'll lead us up towards the A66. These two buttresses would have at one time formed part of a bridge for the old railway. I climbed up from God's Bridge now, which is down there behind the railway um, buildings, and we're on the Pennine Way. As you can probably hear, we're very close to the A66 now. The Pennine Way actually comes down that wall alongside it over God's Bridge and up this track and heads up towards Middleton Teesdale. People doing the Pennine Way would have come from Tan Hill, which is on that skyline way over there to the right. A lot of open moorland between here and there. We'll follow the signs and go through the underpass under the A66.
That underpass certainly saves you having to dodge traffic on what is a really busy road now. Go through the gate and head left up onto the moor. We leave the Pennarm Way here and we'll head northeast up towards West Stony Keld. The moor here can be a bit wet underfoot, but if you pick your way carefully, you should get away with fairly dry boots. There is a path across the moor, but it is indistinct in places. And you'll pass by two sheep builds on your left, made from dry stone walls in a sort of Y shape. These are to give sheep some protection during the winter, and the way they're constructed means sheep can take shelter from the wind at almost any angle. You may also have noticed some grouse shooting butts. This is prime shooting area, and if you're lucky, you'll catch the sight of some of these really handsome birds sitting either in the heather or the white grass. During World War II, much of this area was used as an army training ground. And as you approach West Stony Keld, you may see this remnant of an old tank which was used as either target practice or just for training. Just past it, pick up the track and turn right towards the farm. We'll now be leaving the moor and back onto farmland. And you'll probably see some of the local residents We're now back on the Penang Way loop, as you can tell by the signposts. Follow the signpost for bows, down the farm track, but before you get to the buildings, Go through the gate on the left and into the field. We now cross over three fields and three stiles. In the first field, down on the left, you'll see a dip with some sort of structure in it. This at one time was an old reservoir, but it's fallen out of use now. At the third style, you'll see another signpost, Bows, one and a quarter miles. And that's the route we take, which is along the tarmac road. On the right, you'll see these warning signs. 
During the war, it was an RAF base used for storing ordnance. But it's completely clear now, and the signs just remain as a warning. After about a mile along this road, you'll see it forks, and we'll take the route down to the right, towards Bowes Village. A sign of Bowes Village life. Well worked allotments. Go past them, and you cross the A66, and follow the road round to the left. And you're now back in the village of Bowes. On the right hand side you'll see quite a large building. This is Do the Boys Hall, made famous by Charles Dickens, because he used it as part of the story in Nicholas Nickleby. Carry on walking along the road through the village. Up to your right you'll first see the castle and then you'll pass the church. And then on the left hand side is the pub, the Ancient Unicorn. And just a couple of hundred yards further on is the car park at the end of the walk. It's an enjoyable route that one, filled with plenty of interest and it's good in any season. I always come back with references which I'll use in paintings in the future and that's what I'm going to do now. Take some of these sketches and work them up into full paintings. As ever, if you've enjoyed the film, do click the like button. It's just a simple click. And even better, subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be kept up to date with future postings of films. But as I always say, once again, thanks for watching. Thank you.